I'm here to have another conversation about Alicia Berber's fight against Riverside City College. It is not a topic that I love talking about, but it is a topic that I will never stop talking about until justice is served. Cheryl Miller is here as well, along with Alicia. Let's get into it. A very important lockdown women's basketball starts now. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are Locked On Women's Basketball, your daily podcast on women's basketball. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Locked On Women's Basketball. I'm your host, Howard Magdal, and I want to thank you for making us your first listen every day. Over 170,000 of you showed up for us the way we show up for you six times a week in November alone. So just incredible to be able to share this space with you. Thank you for making us such an important part of your lives. It is not just the podcast and it is not just me. It is the incredible team over at The Next, thenexthoops.com, where we had over 1.2 million readers in November alone, over 100 reported pieces on women's basketball every single month. Go ahead and subscribe. $9 a month, $72 a year, thenexthoops.com. Support the work that is being done. And look, it's all important right? It all matters, the past, the present, the future. But I have had the frustration and privilege of being able to tell Alicia Berber's story for many years now at the next, at the nine, where we have talked about it. And so listeners, before I introduce Alicia and Cheryl Miller, who if she needs an introduction, you're at the wrong podcast because we are. (laughs) Obviously, in the presence of a legend as well. I want everyone to understand Alicia's fight. Uh, Alicia has been coaching at RCC. She is a legend. She went there. She went and played in the Pac-10, was an incredible player there as well. She's the type of person, I've written this, who should be celebrated where she went to school. There should be... There's a statue of Asia Wilson at South Carolina. There should be a statue for Alicia. And 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 if I, it sounds like I'm overstating this, you need to understand not just what she did, but also what she has been up against. She had to file a lawsuit because of endlessly, I mean, not just illegal, but cruel mm-hmm. treatment at the hands of RCC during her time now as women's basketball coach there. She won the lawsuit. Lawsuits in 2012. She's had to file another lawsuit that has been ongoing over the past several years. It, it's. I'm here to tell you, listeners, that I know it's easy, and, and I am a journalist, to say there are two sides to every story. There must be more to it. I am telling you, I have done the legwork. I have reached out again and again to RCC to say, what is your side of the story? Why are you doing these things that you're about to hear? And there is never an answer. There is never an answer. And when Cheryl and I were talking offline, off the air before we got here, it's just you, you'd almost think you're crazy looking at it and trying to process it all. So that's what's ahead for us. We're going to talk in segment one about how we got here. Segment two, we're going to get into the most recent specifics Basic transportation, the washing of uniforms. These are the things that are still being thought about every single day. And so Alicia fights on. I'm honored to have you both on the program. I have been very clear about this. I consider you a friend. And that does not take away from the importance of this story. And I, and, and both matter to me. So first of all, just how are you holding up right now? Um. It's it's a daily process for me every day. You know, I get my morning um, affirmations from from Bible studies. I get my text messages from Cheryl. I get cards in the mail from Annie Myers. I have plenty of support from other community college coaches that really just keep me grounded and trying to understand even the bigger picture. It's it's completely bigger than me. It's for every young lady that ever aspires to be a coach that is playing basketball, 
uh, for every young woman that wants to be an administrator, that wants to be an athletic director, um, for and and really honestly being in the community college level coaching that many years, um, there are so many stories and so many female coaches in the California community colleges that are going through the same things. And it is just my mission to bring light to this. Um, and I, I just, you know, when you put others before yourself, it, you focus on the bigger picture. And that's that's my goal is, is put all the colleagues that I have in the community college ranks and even at the next level that might be going through some things um, and just listening to their stories. Um, I, I at least get a call once a week from somebody experiencing, you know, discrimination or their battles that they're going through. The hashtag is equality in women's sports. Uh, mm -hmm. Make sure you follow on Instagram as well. Really important to be able to shine a light on what is going on. Cheryl, for you, tell me about how you enter this. You know, obviously you are Riverside royalty as well as being, yeah. uh, I'm not, I'm not going to insult the intelligence. Brother. No, no, but you, oh, you, no would think, you would think, you would think. Uh, so, Talk to me about just like the way you enter this story and just your initial reaction to hearing about it and just, you know, what this has been like over time as you've seen this happen, as you've seen uh, RCC essentially refuse to budge on basic human dignity in a way that goes beyond just the letter of the law into something that's just beyond comprehension to me. Well, you talk about, and, and thank you for saying, um, that I'm basketball royalty, but you, uh, you know, um, a prophet has no honor in his own hometown, which I'm finding out. Um, what makes this sad uh, for me the most is uh, one of my dearest friends when I was in high school, she was one of my teammates was uh, Christy Kane. Her father, Chuck Kane, was a president at RCC, great president and God bless his soul. I'm not gonna say he's rolling over in his grave, he's out of it. He's trying to find somebody to choke out in Riverside. That's how bad it is. And I've been shaking my head. I'm like you, Howard. There's no way. Come on, RCC, because I want to hear. I'm like you. You know, I'm a journalist. I want to know your side of the story. Crickets. And the fact that they continue to double down is incredible and it's astonishing. When you think about the particulars of it. And Alicia, for you, it's just, it's this day-to-day -day continuing. And we've seen it. There have been changes at basically every administration. And again, I just, for our listeners to understand, you know, I've spoken to other administrators, people who have left the school who were witnesses to this. This is not just a question of, gee, is there a paper trail? Yeah, there's a paper trail. Is there a question of, uh, it is, other, are other people seeing it? Everyone's seeing it. This is happening in broad daylight. Do you feel as if there is a strength that comes to your team from them seeing what you have been fighting for over this time? You talked about externally. I know it matters externally. And, you know, like you talked about, Ann Myers Drysdale is a friend of the show who's, you know, an, an, another legend who sees it, who understands the problem. Do you think that it helps your team stay together to know what is happening right now, right now? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we, I mean, having to march on campus for basic transportation and laundry and the very next day for my team to go through that adversity and we tried to stay positive when we were marching. I said, just think of it. This is our warm up for the next two days. We're fighting for transportation. And they come back and they beat two teams, 70 to 55 and 70 to 45. I mean, what more affirmation do I need that these young women, I mean, they're they're fighting for their opportunities. They're fighting for the opportunity to transfer to a university. Um, it would just be a blessing for any team to, to pick up our sophomores and take them to the next level because um, they have uh, just shown so much uh, resilience and um, just, they're just right. tough, and their character, that they're just so many words to describe them. And I just, I'm just proud of them. Every time I walk into the gym, um, just what they did in that March was so inspiring to me. I was just in awe of how they did that. I mean, I've never 
marched before. I never created um, a protest like that. I mean, we had a protest uh, back in our gym when we created these shirts, but just to see them march and come up with their own, you know, chant what they were going to say. And um, it was, it was absolutely incredible. And so, yes, it brings us together and there's days that we hang on by a thread, but I just keep reminding them, we got to stick together. We have to stick together. And, you and, can and I'm going to jump in about one thing. And, I, and, I, I, and I'm trying to be positive, but as a black woman, and I, I'm watching, listening, and if one of my daughters was approached by a male who wants to have a conversation about my fragrance yeah. my fragrance this is my daughter being approached by a grown man who's talking about my fragrance and then puts his hands to his nose as to there's a smell there's an odor in this day and age i'm surprised that the parents haven't jumped on somebody yeah i'm surprised mm -hmm. now that talks about the strength the integrity and the character of the parents but if I was a parent, and if that was my daughter, now I'm trying to lower the temperature, but the fact that a man would approach a young woman and would think that he had the right, see, that's where, that's where RCC is. It's the mentality. Mm -hmm. And it starts at the very beginning when you have a chancellor who has multiple sexual harassment charges pending. So women are valued on that campus. There's a culture there, a corrupt culture. And the roots are so deep that that's the only way that you're going to, that, that this college can get right. And they don't understand that it's not they're close. They will be on the wrong side of history. And God, God, for if these guys want to roll the dice and go to trial, I may not know everybody but i know somebody and they are waiting in the wings mm -hmm. and they are going to shut the school down and everybody that had a hand in this i want to see them smiling i want to see what they have to say i want to see what happens when they sit down in that chair across from the lawyers in a deposition what are you going to say i guarantee you people will be flipping it, it is so vital to not not look away. It's too easy to look away. Mm -hmm. so we're going to talk about more about the ways in which you are both bringing this to light. I want to talk more about that protest, about the specifics of it. We'll be right back with segment two. Please stay with us. This is so important. Here to talk to you as well about Game Time. Game Time, of course, one of our sponsors. And Game Time, very important for a household like mine that loves women's basketball very much. I have a young person who lives in my house who uh, not only wants to know what games we're going to, but wants to see, all right, where are we sitting? How am I going to be able to get up close? Uh, just this past weekend, I uh, took her up to Rutgers, Indiana, and she is a center. A young nice. Center, and she wanted to see Mackenzie Holmes and how she finishes consistently. So we went ahead. We're able to see where she was sitting and how she could see Mackenzie, and she was thrilled. Uh, you can go and download the Game Time app to try all this stuff, right? Last-minute seats, exclusive flash deals, anything and everything. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Again, that is the Game Time app using code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. Yeah, you guys can imagine how upsetting it is for me that I have a daughter who wants to go watch basketball with me. Oh, man. <laughs> I love that. So I, I, awesome. I, I hear it, Cheryl. I hear you as a as a parent. And so we do. We have to we have to get into this, right? Basic transportation denied to this team, Alicia. Take me through it. Take me through what happened. 
how it was laid out to you that the school is not going to get you guys to games. Well, it, it started in August when we submitted our request as a head coach. Uh, we have to submit our transportation request. Um, last year, due to my medical accommodations, the last athletic director that was there provided a bus for my team. I have two assistant coaches that are um, they're able to drive, but they're unable due to their primary jobs away from campus. Because as people do know, a community college, you only make, you know, $6,000 stipend to be there for a huge amount of time. So I have no drivers. I also have medical conditions. And on email, so when you say, you know, factual, the athletic director um, is refusing uh, my medical accommodations, asking me, well, what is your medical issue? And he kept constantly, and this was weeks, you have to tell me what your medical issue is. And it's like, wait a minute, no, I don't. There's HIPAA violations. So finally, the vice chancellor of human resource jumps in and says, please stop doing this, you're violating district policy. Mm -hmm. And the vice chancellor of human resources is on email stating that, but then it continued and it continued. Well, we don't know, you know, your approval of the medical accommodations. And I'm like, wow, if anybody knows me, they know I've been beat up when I played basketball. I had 13 surgeries on my body. This isn't something fake. This isn't something made up. These aren't doctors, um, you know, falsifying records. And it was just an insistence and it reminded me so much of my previous lawsuit. And that's where it really started like raising the hairs up on the back of my neck. It's like, oh my gosh, this is Barry Meyer all over again. And come to find out the last athletic director, Barry Meyer, that was in the that first lawsuit, this is his really good friend. And they've brought this guy back into the fold. He's on the sidelines of the football games. And so with the transportation, being denied, he says, well, your coaches, you will tell your coaches to drive. It's like, I'm not going to force anybody to do things that they're not able to do. And so it continued for months. And then they went as far as canceling our scrimmage at La Sierra University. So for community college, for a university to accept a scrimmage with us is an awesome opportunity for our young ladies. And they decided they were going to get us vans. And we said, okay, we'll take vans. We need drivers, but we'll take vans. Well, they, the athletic director said, well, myself and the equipment manager are going to drive you. And my player said, what? We're not getting in the vans with them. They said, coach, we smell that we're not happy. They're making up all this. Stuff. We're not getting in vans with them. They're and uncomfortable. Um, uncomfortable. That's, they were very uncomfortable. And so when we were upset because they canceled our scrimmage, my student athletes wrote a letter, walked it to the president's office, and her response was shocking. As a female, she literally responded with, well, your student athletes can either write an informal or formal complaint, and I will help you connect you with human resources. And I thought, wow. So my student athletes, again, they filed a complaint formally. And now we're moving all the way up to now to where we marched. They insisted that their board policy fits their narrative that I had to find drivers. I had to do everything. So what they did was to the very day that we played, they said the keys are available in the office, find drivers, their vans are there. Yeah. It's like, well, we don't have drivers. So I started scrambling because I want my team to play. So I started asking family members, but of course everybody's working. Um, oh. And then it got to the point where the athletic director was upset and retaliated against me on email and, and basically said, well, come and get your uniforms now. Come down to the equipment room and get your uniforms. And I, so just, they I have to jump in here. I need to point this out. This is really important. It is easy to get lost in the single fight and you could say, you know, that's outrageous on its own terms. But again, these are the battles that you have had to fight again and again. All these things that teams and that the men's teams at Riverside take for granted doesn't happen on the women's side. So just uh, listener, I want you to connect that to understand that, OK, here's this battle, which is, you know, number seven million in an endless list. 
Now, hear how it's connected. Alicia, please go on. So, um, so now the athletic director is saying, well, he's he's within his right. He's within his job description. He can he can take whoever he wants their uniforms. Uh, he can go take the baseball team their uniforms and deliver them. But he doesn't have to do that for you. You can come down and get your own uniforms. And of course, the union gets involved. And I didn't go down there because it's a work condition issue. Right. All the way up until the next day. So finally, as we were marching, the president emails and continues, as the young folks call it, shade, continues to throw shade and says, uh, you know, Coach Berber, to no avail, you couldn't find drivers. So now I'm going to step in and we have vans available for you tomorrow. And we have one van driver secured. And I couldn't believe the first van driver that they secured was opposing legal counsel. And I said, oh my gosh. And then I said, well, you can't make then, no, you can't make it up. I, I, I mean, opposing legal counsel in the current lawsuit. I, I sorry, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So, so now we have um, opposing legal counsel. I still don't know who my other van driver is. Mm -hmm. And 15 minutes before my team is supposed to get ready to get on the vans and get dressed, I still don't have the uniforms because the athletic director is standing his ground. So I emailed the president again. The union got involved. Right. And now all of a sudden, my uniforms were placed outside my office door and I get a text message from the compliance officer and says, coach, your uniforms are outside your door. They didn't even have the decency to knock on the door. Here's your uniforms. They were just left there in a box. Right. And I said, OK, I got the uniforms. So I'm not letting these uniforms go. They're not going to stop us from you know playing. Right. So then it continued. So we get to the vans and there's the legal counsel. And then our other van driver was a district benefits lady. And so the legal counsel comes up to me and he says, well, coach, you know, this is a little awkward because I am opposing legal counsel. Nothing. So, we, so we can't talk about the case. And I'm like, I'm getting ready for a game. I don't want to talk about the horrendous stuff that I'm going through. Why would I even have a conversation with you about that? So I get in the van and I make sure that I'm with him. Um, so that way there's no, I don't know if they're, they have them as a lookout on us or I, I don't know. The things that they do are just really out of pocket as kids talk. I, <laughs> you know, I mean, so. more, more than you, but he's the one who has the ethical moral issue in that moment. Le leave everything else aside. He's the one who has the bigger problem. Why he was even willing to do this defies belief. And again, speaks to harassment, intimidation tactics that are, mm -hmm. you know, again, coin of the realm. But I, I want to get to the end of this. We got to get to our second break. I want to get to the end of this story because it is at least a celebration. It is at least a triumph within this challenge. And I want people on, the, uh, on this broadcast to also understand what they can do, how they can follow, how they can help. So we're going to get right back with it. Obviously, stay with us. Here to talk to you, of course, about FanDuel, and FanDuel is continuing to offer something for those of you who may be like us back in Jersey, Tommy DeVito fans, which is to say that FanDuel, now, if you bet any $5 winning money line bet, you get $150 in bonus bets. Uh, I'm not going to tell you to keep betting on Tommy DeVito, even though it's worked for the last couple of weeks, but yes, my in-laws who are passionate New York Giants fans are very happy. So if you've been joining, thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action for spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to celebrate the NFL season, which is surprisingly, in fact, interesting for New York Giants fans. FanDuel, the official betting partner of the NFL. So we are back. And so if you uh, missed it before, we're on the bus. Opposing legal counsel is there. You are trying to get this team to their game. Take me through what happens next. Um, I just make sure that I that I keep my team together. I tell them to focus on the game, lock into what we have to do. And we get to Santa Ana College. And we had an incredible game. And we beat the team 70 to 55. And then we have the next day where we have two new van drivers 
and we come back and beat the other team 70 to 45. And, you know, my players were just so proud of the fact that they were able to march and fight for their right. And now I have to schedule another game to make up for the one we missed, but um, just so incredibly proud of them. And I, I really, I really want to see people bring light to the situation. I want to see these shirts worn by everybody in any color that they want. I want everything brought to light. Oh, yeah. And I think social media really, really does this. And, and what you're, you're giving us, uh, Howard is just a platform to talk about, uh, you know, my story, but it's really everybody's story. And Howard, mm -hmm. I, and this is where I, I want to jump in and thank you um, for not only using your platform and you are a man of great integrity, but you're a man. You are a man and we need more males who are standing, who need to stand up They are They have sisters, they have, you know, nieces, they have cousins, they have moms, they have, you know, aunties, they have women in their life that are going to experience or have gone through it. And that's what we need are more men stepping up. Bottom line is that this is a human rights issue and mm -hmm. it should not take having I hear people use the phrase of the father of daughters a lot. And I personally think it, that phrase should be banned from the lexicon, in my opinion, because you shouldn't have to have daughters in order for this to matter to you. So my, my personal belief is that this is a human rights issue that we are working on together. And I am honored to be part of it and honored to talk to you about it. So again, the hashtag is equality in women's sports. There is an Instagram feed where you have to, you just have to follow this. It has to be seen to be believed. Where and how do people get t-shirts? How else can they join the fight? Uh, the link is on the Instagram where yeah. they can order um, the shirts. And we are actually, we worked on, they can get their own team colors. We want all the teams Yes. All over the place. You can get your team color and you can have it green and red and whatever you want, but we just want the message out there. And it's not just for women's basketball, it's for all sports. And that was the message that we wanted to share with everybody. It could be for softball, what, whatever um, anybody wants to send that message out there would be so incredibly helpful. And we're going to have a link in the description. It's shop.idactivewear.com slash equality slash shop slash home doesn't roll off the tongue, right? So we'll make sure we got the link in the description. <laughs> make sure you do it, but follow. It's on that Instagram profile as well. Uh, this is a story that's not, I wish it were going away, but it's not going away. And we're going to continue to keep you updated here at the nine, at the next. Alicia, before we go, I just, I, I've asked you this a few times. I'm not even just in our stories, but just while we're talking. It, this goes on and on and on. Cheryl, you said to me back in 2021 that mm -hmm. I don't think she's ever going to leave on anything other than her own terms. I think mm -hmm. it's a statement I've heard about it. Alicia, when, when you struggle with this fight to go on, what is it that powers you? What do you reach to? to be able to find the strength to do this because, and I, I say this and, and I do not mean this in any sort of hyperbole. I don't know anyone else who would have this kind of strength to fight the way you're fighting. Just take us through what you do to find that strength. You know, it's as simple as what recently happened to see the young ladies march around that campus and having the courage and the voice to do that and have a faculty member run up to me in tears and turn around, grabs my shoulders, turns me around and say, look, look at what you are doing. You are empowering young women. And that just got me, I felt no injury, no knee injury at that moment. Your adrenaline is just pumping and you are just fired up and you are so empowered by the young women who um, are 18, 19 years old mm -hmm. that had the courage to do that. And so that's what keeps me going um, to be able to see that and witness that and have my daughter um, disappointed that she was in school and she wasn't with me. She goes, mom, I, I wanna march with you. And I said, 
you know, there'll be a time that you'll use your voice, baby. But um, so she was, she was really excited. She was showing all her teammates, look at what my mom's doing. And that's what empowers me. I, I love it. And so Howard, I will, I will tag that and just say, because of those young ladies, they have brought such a calm in my life now. I don't feel the need to go down there and choke somebody out. So I thank them and I applaud them because somebody was close to getting choked out. I I love the fight from both of you. I am here with you every step of the way. To our listeners, thank you for sharing in this day with us and hearing this equality in women's sports. Uh, I stand with Lisa Berber. I will say that every day and every night. Uh, until next time, we'll be back with you tomorrow, of course. I am Howard Maddal, wishing all of you a wonderful Tuesday. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. 